Yeah, thanks so much for coming. And uh, of course, feel free to ask any question if you like are confused about my definition or terminology uh, or anything else. So yeah, first, uh, so today the focus of the talk is going to be a very interesting bootstrapping theorem. So what do I mean by bootstrapping? I mean, so this theorem is going to take a slow or fairly faster than non fairly faster than trivial the randomization of a class called Merlin Arthur. Okay, it's actually defined here, but uh, I don't think I can make that out. So uh, for Merlin Arthur, yeah, I'll I'll define this in you know, a moment. If you never see it. So it takes a slow generalization of Merlin Arthur. So bootstrapping into a fast randomization of Bull Merlin Arthur. And then I will explain how uh, very fast, by fast I actually mean quasi polynomial time, but uh, so I'll get to that. So this thing about it has a very fast generalization of Bull Merlin Oh, can you hear me actually? Do I? You can take it off, yeah. Sure. Fast randomization of it. Maybe that now it's not clear. <laughs> so fast generalization of, of money. The, I also explain how this fast randomization implies uh, circuit low bound. I always write CKT to mean circuit low bound. So yes, these two arrows is going to be. To today's topic, and I'll mainly focus on the first bootstrapping part because it's, it's to me it's the most exciting one. And then using this bootstrapping theorem, we can get some unconditional generalization of Merlin Arthur proof system with ACC zero verifier, which will which can be used to prove new, which can be used to prove second level bounds against ACC zero. And uh, okay. So here's the plan for today's talk. First, I will recall some definition, and I already wrote some here. So recall definition. And the second, I will just, I will actually first explain this direction uh, to give you some motivation why we should care about faster randomization of money answer proof system. So, second, I will first quickly tell you how randomization of money answer proof system implies okay, low bound. Third, I will just go straight into the bootstrapping theorem. And uh, finally, if time permits, I wish to tell you a very interesting new proof of XOR lemma. Uh, the lemma, uh, there are many different proofs of X lemma, of course, but uh, the new proof will be very suited in this context for getting the bootstrapping theorem works. So has has the plan for today's talk. Um, so maybe it's good you are starting from this uh, the randomization implies circuit low bound. So maybe a reminder for people from last week when I showed why circuit low oh, bound yeah. implies the randomization. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you sit behind each other, it's a little confusing. I, <laughs> so I would, uh, circuit low bound implies the randomization for creating PRGs, and that's the opposite direction. Yes, and uh, I'm not going to give too much detail on details on this because I wish to talk more about bootstrapping, but I'll give you a convincing high level, high level idea why this should be true. Okay, so let's get, let's, first I need to recall some definition because to make sure everyone on, on the same page. Uh, uh, I guess you can take a nap if you know other things. 
So, okay, first of all, a language is just a subset of Boolean strings. And uh, so when I say general circuit, I mean it's a, a directed graph. Com so you are, you are essentially trying to build a lot a com com complex function out of some simpler function. Those simpler functions are called gates. So for example, if I look at this diagram, this is a circuit of three gates. So, so I'm measuring the size by the number of gates, except the inputs. And it has depth two. By depth, I mean the longest path for an input to a single output. So how do you compute that computer output from this particular circuit? You look at x1 and x2, you compute the end of them. You look at x2, x3, x4, compute the all of them. And then you compute the end of these two results. And of course, it can be much, much more complicated than that. It can be like on many, many inputs. But uh, this is an example of a circuit. So, so here, I'm going to allow the end or our gates to have unbounded finding. This has no effect on the definition, just to make sure just to make the to make it consistent with the AC0 I'm going to talk about. So in a general circuit, I have no, res no restriction on the depths. The depths can be as, uh, as large as the size, like you can have uh, a line, although that's probably mm -hmm. really less circuit. So yes. So this is a, uh, so circuit is uh, just a, uh, combinatorial way to compute to to organize computation. You, you can think about it as that. So why we study circuits? It's because um, it, it, it will be very nice to prove certain functions cannot be computed computed by polynomial size circuits. For example, if you can prove that for some function f in MP, it cannot it cannot be computed by polynomial size circuits, then it will imply p is not equal p does not equal mp so people have tried very hard to prove second law bonds uh, but unfortunately that's not very easy so people first look at the constant depth region so so this means that you are fixing a depth like i say 100 and then you are looking at a, a function which can take unbounded number of inputs like like parity and uh, so the first class, oh, let me know if you have any questions. The first class people are interested in is AC0, which are just the end or not gates with unbounded finding, and uh, you have a fixed constant depth, let's say 100. And polynomial size. And, uh, yeah, yes, so when I write AC0, AC0, M without specifying the size, it always means polynomial. Yeah, sometimes I will probably say like n to the log n to the circuits, but uh, when, I, when I didn't specify the size, it always means polynomial. Yes, thanks so much for reminding me this. So uh, for AC0 circuits, a uh, very, uh, very beautiful line of work uh, prove very strong circuit level bound against, against AC0 circuits. So we know the sum function, also, okay, we know parity cannot be computed by even sub, some sub exponential size AC0 circuits. So, but uh, okay, the next class I will be talking the most about is AC0M. Okay, I, I actually explain what does M mean here. So M is a fixed constant. Think about, so I will just, I will usually just talk about two or six. So think about M as either two or six, but it can be any constant. So, so this class, can use, it still has constant size. It can use n or not, and the one additional mod m gates. So mod m gates is a Boolean function. It, it, look at, it looks at how many ones is in the input. And then it outputs one if, if this parameter m does not divide the number of input, the number of ones. And it outputs zero otherwise. So if m is two, it's actually just parity, right? You out of the one, if the number of ones is odd, and otherwise you output the zero. But but now parity is one of the gates in your circuit. 
Yes, yes. So so now if it's an M, you can use. So for example, you can you can you know you can you can also you can use M mod let's say two. You, you here you use a two. So you can you, you're allowed to use mod M gates in your circuit. So okay, why study this? One reason, one, one reason is that because now we know parity is hard for AC0, AC0. So maybe you can make this slightly larger and see if we can prove a lower bound on AC0 plus parity gates. And, uh, and the answer is yes, people write borrow from the smallest key, they, they have the lower bound for AC0 too. And uh, but unfortunately, the so that proof is used the famous polynomial method. But uh, unfortunately, the proof only works when m is a prime. So if m is some is is not a prime like six, so that proof doesn't apply to AC zero six. And it's and uh, somewhat surprisingly, it's 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 very hard to prove a lower bound against AC zero six. And currently, we don't know any simple function. By simple, I mean in MP, which has no polynomial size AC06 circuits. But uh, in, a decade ago, Williams makes a breakthrough proving that uh, non deterministic exponential time has no AC06 circuits. And that was improved to, okay, I'll explain what I, what I mean by. Not the music experimental time later, but I, I'm just gonna just give me an overview. And the Murray Williams greatly improved the lower bound against AC06. So today I will try to give you an overview of, a, of an alternative proof of that result. Okay, any question for now? Um, so is, is the definition clear? You can use. They say zero additional with uh, mod M gates. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so to explain Williams and Murray and Williams result in more detail, I want to define. Uh, Two classes. So, okay, by NT here, T is short for time. So it means non deterministic time. So when I say a language L is in non deterministic T of N time, I mean that there exists a verifier which takes N bit inputs, T of N bits witness, and it runs in T of N time such that X is in L if and only if there exists a witness y such that b accepts x and y. So this is the definition of non-deterministic t of n time. Uh, so, so we'll usually write, you know, mp is just a non-deterministic polynomial time. And it's also something I will use a lot. It's called NQP, which is in, again, written too large. It's in non deterministic two to the polylog n time. So, so Murray and Williams prove that. So, the, recall the goal is to prove NP is not in A0M or A06. And what they prove is that NQP, non deterministic quasi polynomial time, is not in AC06, right? or is not in polynomial AC06, which is, which is uh, like much closer to MP than non deterministic exponential time. Oh, but non deterministic exponential time, I just mean that. Here, T of n is like two to the poly n or something. Can I ask a semi-technical question? Yes. Is the polylog in this bound 
bigger than log the size of the circuit to the depth of the circuit or smaller? Uh, if I want to prove a log bound for depth 100, do I need the, to allow poly log where the poly is 1000 or just 10? Uh, I think very good question. I it's probably much more than 1000. Yeah, I mean, it's bigger than the log size to the depth. So you still. Okay, so I think, you, the, 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 okay, so if the second size is, I think the current proofs give you something like the size composed with yourself three times. So if you mean it's like a log n to the, well, 10, it becomes like log n to the 1000? No, no, no. The only point I am trying to make is that this polylog is bigger than log the circuit size to the power of the depth. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's, it's, much, yeah. it's, much, yeah. it's much bigger. Yes. Yeah, so that's, yeah. So in some sense, while it's a huge improvement over non deterministic exponential time, in this qualitative sense, it is not. Oh. There's still enough time to enumerate over. Yes, yes, yes. Over, over all the, you know, probably not only as approximating the circuit or something. Anyway, it's a sign that yeah, we don't want to do that. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, you don't have in this. Oh, yeah, you have the. Oh, yeah, you, 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 can, have, you, have, you can, of course, guess the circuit here, but you cannot enumerate all the circuits. Yeah, 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 no, I realize this. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so, okay. So, I, I, okay, the. Most important definition is actually the depth, the Merlin answer time. So it's just a randomized version of non-deterministic chart n time. So here you have a verifier which takes input, witness, and the random bits, and it runs in still runs in chart n time. And the and the condition is that if x is in L, then that exists a witness, which is going to be accepted by probability at least two thirds. And uh, if the if x is not in L, then for every possible proof, so why I think about why is a proof, it's going to be accepted with probability at most a third. So it, it's just the, just think about it as a, it's just a randomized version of, of the, deterministic verifier here. This is the definition of uh, money after time. Uh, it's going to be quite important. If you have any question, if you haven't seen this before, it's just a randomized version of NP where you can, if you accept with high probability a, a correct proof or, the, or in no case, no proof can make you accept. Uh, okay, let's see, how do I? Next time to be polynomial again, you get the class MA. Uh, yes, I okay. So MA is just a uh, uh, hope you it. Okay. So next, next, I want to recall the definition of PRG, which is going to be. Uh, yeah, I think the last time you already saw the definition of PRG from Roy's talk. So, but I guess it's good to recall it anyway. But after that, I want to recall, I want to introduce a new definition, which is very important for the derandomization of MA, which is called non deterministic PRG, but let's first quickly recall the definition of PRG. So we see a function G for S bits, S bits to M bits is epsilon PRG for a class. Maybe I'm writing too large. <laughs> For our class F is 
for all function f in this class f, we have the the expectation. We got to the probability, probability of for f outputs a uh, random input. So f is um is close the probability that okay, this is close, this is at most absolute. I think I'm writing larger and larger, but yeah. So, so I mean, so S here is the seedless. So the most important thing about the PRT is that we require it to G to be computable in roughly two to the S time. Okay, so, so now suppose you want to estimate, fix that function F, you want to estimate this quantity, the, the probability of F, F accept a random input, what you can do is that you enumerate all possible S, S sees here, you compute the G on R, you, you take the average, and then it's going to be epsilon close to the, the its acceptance probability on a random stream. So and the whole thing will take two to the S time. Yeah, two to the OS time, yes. Yes, to the roughly to the S time. Yes. Okay, so this is the PRGS. I should, uh, most of people should probably just be. Uh, okay, let me see. I feel you cannot lift up stuff. So. Yeah, that's a problem. Let's see. You left out the, the original input to F? Hmm? Uh, so you wrote that you left out the original input, input to F? There is an input. Oh, so you mean, oh, yes. Yeah. So what to do first is that you, you take a randomized algorithm. You fix the input X as, as the like, you, you fix the first input of the randomized. So, the randomized algorithm takes two inputs at the input x and randomness r. You fix the first part, then you get only a circuit. So that's how it works. Usually. Yeah, yeah. I I had something like that that I decided to uh, omit it because I, I I I want more time to to prove theorems. But yeah, so I think just just to make sure, like suppose so usually in in, in a randomized algorithm takes you know. And input x, so for example, a polynomial, you want to test whether it's zero or not, and some randomness. And to use this PRG to de randomize a randomized algorithm, what you do is that you, you fix the first part, like the polynomial or anything you uh, input to your question, and then you are only looking at a simple, a single, a function with a simple, single input randomness. And then suppose, the PRG works for this particular function on R, you can use to estimate the acceptance probability and uh, yeah. Okay, so the okay, next one, the next is one of the most important definition, which is probably new. So yeah. So suppose I want to de-randomize MA into MP. So why I want to do that? Because I mean, MA is a random with the MA has a randomized verifier. I want to make sure I want to turn it into a deterministic verifier. The first thing to notice is that if I have a PRG, that's possible. So what to do is that so here you want to estimate. So for so for when you when you have input the X and you have a proof Y, you fix this too. And you wish to estimate the probability of accepting this R. So if you have, if I have PRG, great. I I don't have to take a random R. I enumerate all possible C's to estimate this probability. 
Of course, now it's still uh, not around being non-deterministic two to the s time roughly. But uh, we, I, I have the I'll have the generalization. But what I said I didn't use the power of non-determinism. So we can also define something called non-deterministic PRG. So this, this is actually a pair of two functions. So now G is a pair of two functions, GW and GP. So, okay. So GW, uh, so GW is going to take W bits as input and the output one or zero. And the GP is going to take W bits times some C, S domain C, and the output M bits. So, okay, what's the condition we want to satisfy? The requirement is that first, GW should be non trivial, meaning that GW equals one for some u. So it's going to accept some input. And second, whenever this accept, we should have G, P, U, and uh, this should be a PRG, should be an epsilon PRG. Definition clear? So you, so W here is, is so you think? Oh, it's a PRG for every U such that GW is one. Yes, yes, for- I mean, there's a pick system which one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, thanks so much, that, that, that's very important. So for every U, for every U such that GWU is one, it has to be a PRG. And also GWU accepts some some way, so it's not trivial. If GW accept nothing, then of course it holds. It's, it's useless. Okay. So why this is you? Why we consider this non-deterministic PRG? Because before that, I mean, S should be small, but how long should we think of W? Is it also needs to be small or can be large? Oh, W can be very large. Okay. So that's so, so yeah. So what's okay? So what's okay? W should be at the most two to two, two to S. Yeah, but it can be the witness to the in the proof system or something. Oh yes. The thing about W maybe just add, just add two to the S. So it doesn't like you know affect the whole running time. The the both of the the W is at most two to the S, both of the functions should be computable in time two to the S. So okay. Now let's see how do we use this MPRG to de-randomize this morning as a proof system. Uh you should you think about it, okay, it's quite obvious actually. So what you do is that, so now you 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 take uh, you interpret your proof. Okay, let's see how do I say. So now you try to the proof should be both y and u here and u here. So the proof. So in the yes. So what you do is that you guess y, you guess u, and you reject immediately if g w rejects you. But if GW accepts you, 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 you are in luck. You can use GP to estimate the acceptance probability. And you accept if your estimation is greater than, let's say, half. So the important thing is that this, the, 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 this generation works. So let, let's go through it. So in the yes case, because this condition it accepts some U, on the original right witness y, and also on this accepted u, I'm going to accept because my estimation is correct. And in the, in the no case, uh, for every y and for every u, so if, if u makes it reject, then I immediately reject. If you make it accept, my estimation is going to be correct, so I'll still reject because my estimation is going to be like below half. So. So this is going to be the way we use to de-randomize money as a proof system. So our construction will give you some kind of non-deterministic PRG. 
So the point is that it should be easier to construct non-deterministic PRGs, and the definition takes advantage of the fact that there is non-determinism in the class you offer. Yes, yes, that's completely correct. So, okay, of course, if I give you a PRG, I just, I just, GW just ignore W output one, and the GP just ignore W compute this PRG, then this is, then, I mean, so I'm saying every epsilon PRG is going to be an epsilon non-deterministic PRG, but the non-deterministic PRG takes additional advantage of you can guess something and verify. So, yes. Okay, so any question for now? Like this is very important, I think. Uh, can you give some intuition on how this guess can help? Well, you, he will uh, probably yeah. okay. show you. <laughs> if that's in your plan, then. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's actually the plan. So, okay, so actually, this is, this is more like proof complexity now because you, you need to verify some truth table is hard. You are not required to construct some truth table. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the intuition, but uh, okay, I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, I, I will try to keep this for a while, but uh, I guess at some point I have to erase it. Uh, but this is very important, so maybe you can take a note or take a picture or whatever. Let's say, Leo, we actually answered this. Uh, how you can take advantage. PLGs are no, no, yes, constructed I mean. from hard functions. If you could guess a hard, I mean, if there was a certificate, a way to certify that some W is hard, this would be GW. If some, something certifying that W is hard, then you know you can use W in your PLG construction. <laughs> because the GP takes, uses W. Mm. But you will not use it if it's not hard. Mm -hmm. That's one. Okay, so the way you did. Yeah. Okay, so let me okay, let me quickly give an overview of what we know about PRGs, uh, which is going to be short because we don't know much. <laughs> so okay, the only the only thing we know unfortunately we only have for the PRG for AC0. And that's a recent work by so by Xin Lu, I believe we have push it to optimal, assuming has that lower bound can um yeah. Uh, so yeah. So so that's a long line of work on this, of course. So it depends by you no. Know, you can combine Nissan Wilson with the Hasad correlation bounds to get something. I believe that should be like log s to the two d plus o one or something. And that's a lot of work. Like last stock, I think Kelly has a new new work on it, which improved the citizens. Oh, but I, the, the, okay. I'm sorry. The status is uh, log s to to all d. So d, d is the s is the size of a zero. D is the depth. And uh, so that's a lot of work trying to optimize this constant here. I, I believe it, it was originally you can combine hostile correlation bounds and is that what to get two d plus or one. But the rest of the year, I believe like that's some recent work. Which, which gets the optimal citizens conditioning that you are not improving, improving hashtag global. So, so uh, okay, I think that's that's yet for AC0 parity or AC0 M, we don't have a very good PRG at all, I think. So for AC02, we have a PRG with AC02, the best. We know it's something like the sequence is n minus n by holy log n, I believe. So that's some non trivial saving, but uh, this is not going to be uh, very useful in context of generalization. Oh, sorry, AC02. And for AC06, we probably we know nothing. We, because, I mean, PRG requires such a low bound, we don't have. A second level bound for exponential time. We don't have that. For so it's six. So that's essentially for PRG. So okay. So what do, what do we know about non-deterministic PRG? Well, first of all, PRGs are non-deterministic PRG. So what I said about AC0 still applies. 
and I think that's still the best thing we know about AC0. But for AC06, we do have some interesting nonsense. Some, re some recent work give you some interesting non-deterministic PRG. So we have written a paper with Hanin. We have a non-deterministic PRG for AC06 with C the lens and to the little O1. It's actually an inverse function of a half exponential function, but just go with n to the, F, n to the little O1, C the lens. And, uh, okay, and uh, in, a, in another work, oh, this is in 20, in another work by me, Xin Lu, and Williams, we improved the sedence for AC06 from n to the O1 to polylog. And this is the, the result I'm going to cover here. So, so in this work, we give a polylog seedlands non-deterministic PRG for AC06. And that's going to be very useful. Right? So, okay, so suppose this V is computable in AC06, then my NPRG can be randomized this many other time, right? Mm -hmm. At where the NPRGs were originally defined? Like what were they introduced for? Uh, I think it's in IKW, right? I'm not super sure it's, it's so, completely. In right. NW, we don't have this, but uh, what, what did you ask him? Yeah. Uh, no, so the, maybe, uh, no, so for now, uh, Van Melkebeek did not define them. All this was the first to attempt the definition of non deterministic PRG I see. in the 90s. Uh, it was not this definition, it was different. So the, yeah, the idea of that you, you can use not determinate them all. Yeah, but it's easier. Uh, should I have to, people try definition? This one, I don't know where it's. Uh, oh, I, I formulated this one by myself. Yeah. I think it's equivalent to the old definition. It's just cleaning the, I don't want to discuss like non deterministic machines, but uh, so, yeah. So, oh, I, I, so GWGP, that is normal deterministic algorithms. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think, okay, this, this particular definition, I think I I wrote it in my paper, uh, in my like uh, 19, 20, 19 paper in Fox. And, uh, but I think this a similar definition occurred many, uh, many, in many early papers. In IKW, in this uh, paper with the Polyats and Cabanets, uh, you know, at least you are trying yeah. to certify how a function which yes. is basically what this yes. is doing. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but I hope- You're already in Cabanets thesis. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. yeah, but I hope this definition is making this cleaner because I don't talk about non deterministic machines, but machines, yeah. So, okay, so, so this is going to be the focus of this talk. Great. Uh, so, okay, here will be a good time to ask Questions? I have a quick question. Yes. So could you just remind us for me for algebraic circuits, what's the best PRG? Uh, so for algebraic circuits, I think you 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 only need to construct kitchen sets because uh, that's okay if you don't know what to talk about. I believe the written brick through on constant depths give you something, but which is probably like n to the little o one. Oh, oh I, I, sorry, I don't remember the parameter. Yeah, yes. They, they probably, did they give? I think they give it to the zero one. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, because I believe the that low one is only super polynomial, not like sub-exponential. It's yeah. quasi-polynomial. Yeah, so if, if it's quasi-polynomial, you probably only enter it over. If it's sub-exponential, then it should give you polylog. So it might, I, I'm not familiar with algebraic complexity theory, but I think that it probably works no, same. Okay, the, I guess the parameter dependency is probably similar. Okay, so wait, I'm doing on time. Okay. Okay, so now, now it's, it's good time to, to, for me to tell you how 
de-randomization of morning as a proof system gives you a lower bounds. So essentially, what's really going on is that, okay. Oh, I forgot to define something very important. So, uh, okay, I'll I, I write it out quickly. So, if I write morning time C T to the N, what I mean is that uh, for every fixed x and the y, the restricted function on R can be computed by T of N size C circuit. Is the complexity of the verifier? Uh, it's slightly different because, okay, it's different. Okay, there are two notions. The first, that, the first is that you require V to be computable, the whole thing computable in C. The second is that, that you require F for every fixed X and Y, the, res the restricted function on R can, can, can be computed in T size C. Oh, you, you can just think about it as V is computable in C, that's fine. But uh, yeah. for the PRT to work, you only need to require that for every fixed X and Y, the restricted function is in T size C. So this is going to be like, oh, I guess you just think about it as like V is computable in C because now NPRG for C will work. Great. So what are we really going to prove? So now, now, I have, now I can try to say something more technical. So what we are going to do is like, so this N here means the number of random bits. So it, it just means the length of R here. So, Money as a proof system with C verifier two to the n to the epsilon running time and the n bits of randomness. If we can prove this is in like a non trivial randomization, this implies MAC, uh, actually n to the log n time. That should be a time. It's in. Forget about I O if you don't know it. So, 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 so look at. So, this is the bootstrapping and the. And the, this. Faster generalization like MS with C verifier in NQP will imply NQP is not in C, not in polynomial size C. So the bootstrapping is the thing I will talk about next. So here I will try to explain why this works. So why if, if I have a quasi polynomial time generalization of moving as a two system with C verifier. I should be able to get non circuit level bounds for NTOP. Any question? Uh, this is a bit technical. So, okay, I, I noticed an algorithm for some reason, but uh, to, to make it completely clear, right? if you, yeah, yeah think about it as just MAT if you don't like the algorithm. Okay, so I'll try to explain why the star works. So, Actually, the star works for a very simple reason. You, so you can unconditionally prove that MAT with C verifier uh, log and on time, actually with some advice, but let's forget about the advice. <laughs> it should be one bit of a, one bit, or maybe log n or, or one. Okay, never mind. So, So, so you, you, we can unconditionally prove that morning as a proof system with a C verifier is not in C. There's no polynomial size C surface. So you can prove this unconditionally. And so now, okay, so now if I can de randomize, so, so take the, the hard language L here, which is not in polynomial size C circuit. For this statement, you don't need the MA, you just need the T, right? No, 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 you need the MA. Why you don't need this C, C is this there is a polynomial time and this guy is running in 
Uh, oh, 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 say, 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 say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the enumeration and verification. Say it's not any problem study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. 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 So, okay. So, okay. Money app. So we have this unconditional lower bound. If we take this a hard language L, let's say L is in L is in M A time to log n time. We see that if I, uh, it has no C circuits. By all generalization, let's, if you forget about this infinity offer, then this L will be in NQP as well, right? Because the whole class is randomized. And then L is, has no, so that NQP has no C circuits. Uh, okay, I guess. Uh, okay, so yes, I'm cheating a lot here because there's actually an infinity offer going on. So, um, should I say more about this? So, so if, if you are interested in knowing how do you handle this infinity often, so actually this is not easy to handle because this infinity, if you don't know what it means, it, it says that your generalization only works on infinitely many input lengths. So, so this means that if you take this, and also this, this statement also says that the hard language L is also infinitely often is hard on infinitely many input lengths. So what if on the hard input lengths, the generalization doesn't work? Then you are screwed because you know, not, then you have, have no guarantee at all. So Murray and Williams came up with a solution. They strengthen this generalization a bit, and they also strengthen the lower bound a bit to make sure the input lenses where the generalization works must intersect. With the input lenses that the function is hard. If they intersect, then great, you have, you have some hardness. Uh, you, uh, they should intersect infinitely often. Yeah, but uh, that's technical stuff, and uh, if you don't understand that, it's okay. Just forget about it. But the bottom line is that we, we know unconditional, unconditional lower bound for running as a proof system. So de randomizing them unconditionally give you a lower bound for NQP. Yes, that's how the that's why generalizing money as a proof system gives you a circuit lower bound. Yeah. Any question? Yes. Okay. But uh, for people who have never seen this kind of statement, it's very simple to prove. <laughs> yeah. Okay, with us, I know, yes. But with I actually. No, 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 no. Just this. Just uh, the, this plot in C. Is this very simple to prove? Well, I mean, if you. Uh, uh, I think you need some instant check and, P and IP yeah. equals PC. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, yeah, it's simple to prove using the tools that uh, yeah, are of the trade. Uh, you need instant check. Yeah. Actually, not. No. Uh, that's a, okay, so okay, so the the verifier complexity is instant checker composed with the circuit you guess. You need oh, to oh, yeah. you need the instant checker to be compatible by C. That's right. And, uh, by C. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so. Uh, actually, the previous paper only showed instant checker compatible in TC0, but uh, with more work, you can make the instant checker work in AC0 too. So, so this is this statement is uh, for ACC, or that statement is for any C? Yeah, oh, this statement is for any C, which is more powerful than AC0 too. Okay. Well, actually, this is new. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I wasn't trying to dwell too much on this, but uh, yes, so this is not very easy to prove because that's, you, you want the verifier to stay in C. Now, of course, if the verifier is not, you can do whatever to verify that it, it, this is very simple to prove. Yes, I agree. Yeah, so, okay. What's the reference? Oh, I, actually, I'm writing it down. So. <laughs> but I, I can tell you how to do it. So essentially, you, you, you want to, uh, so you, you have to look at the IP equals P space proof and try to verify, make sure the verifier can be implemented in an AC02 circuit. That's doable, but uh, it requires like some observation. It's, it's not hard, it's not like some very hard thing to do, but it's something I, I observed. Like, yes. okay. Yeah, I can tell you more if you are interested. So great, uh, okay. Uh, Okay, I think we are doing very good on time. So let me start with the bootstrapping theorem. So 
Well, uh, whenever you whenever you think it's a good time, you can do a five minute break. I'm not sure when will be a good time. But... Uh, I can do it again. Okay, maybe we can do it in eleven thirty or something. Like... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can try to write an overview, and then we can take a, take a break. Okay, good. So, okay, so actually, I want to first do a warm up. So, in the warm up, I will just work with general Merlin Arthur proof system. I will try to show that Merlin Arthur time, do we have so n piece of randomness between non deterministic to the n minus n to the epsilon time. I think I'm writing too big, but this is, this implies m a is in n to g. So why I call this is a one map is because uh, we, we don't know how to prove this part. So we, we don't know how to like slightly faster, give a slightly faster generalization of money answer, general money answer proof system. So I'll bet you have a much stronger conclusion. We, we have nothing unconditional. But uh, the, 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 the real constructing theorem have a thing here, right? And uh, for when C equals AC06, we can use Ryan's algorithm to, to prove this part, this first uh, hypothesis or this assumption unconditionally using Ryan's, it's, it's, it's Ryan's algorithm. So uh, what I want to say is that when C is AC06, we, we have something unconditional because the first part is true. But uh, I'll go with uh, the general case for now because it's, uh, simp it's uh, simpler. So, the, the roadmap is going to be, so we'll, we'll try to construct an NPRG for general circuits. And uh, the way you do it is that, you first show that, you first show that if this is true, then that exists some verifier B has no easy witness. I'll, I will explain what I mean by has no easy witness. And then this, if some verifier has no easy witness, this gives you an MPRG. And the MPRG has polylog incidence. So it gives you quad two to the polylog, which is quasi polynomial time generalization. So that's uh, okay. I'll define this in a moment. But uh, so this, this is going to be the roadmap. Uh, let's take a five minute break. Okay. This is a cabinet idea from this series, but uh, what it was classified. Yeah, 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 yes, so yes. What you like to uh, uh, yes. <laughs> So
No easy witness. It, it just so okay, let, let, let me start by what I mean by V has easy witness. So this is just a negation of this statement. So okay, so also V is a verifier for some language. So and I, specifically we are going to pick a unary language. So L is going to be a subset of one to the n. And also L is being non-deterministic to the n time. Meaning that, so V is going to be a verifier for L. So one to the N is in L if and only if exists a you know two to the N, two to the N, uh, then string. Think about Y as a choose table of some NB function actually. V accepts Y. So why I say V has easy witness, it means that for all. For, for all sufficiently large n, if one to the n is in L, it means B accepts some y. And then B must accept a choose table of some 
like a, some small size circuit, two to the n to epsilon size circuit D. So this means this is a statement that V has easy witness. So, so must accept uh, so must accept some easy function. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. This should be interpreted as an easy two to the n to the epsilon should be is a thought here as small. And the function computable by some circuit is yeah, so yes, yeah, so yes, so y has two to the n less. So and then so so this is like a d only takes two to the n to the epsilon piece to describe, right? So yes, yeah, we are saying that uh, if v has easy witness, like it has some witness which has a succinct representation in terms of a small circuit. Yes. Okay, so this this is B has easy witness. Okay, so okay, let's just negate this definition and say what do I what do I mean by B has no easy witness? So I just try to do the negation for us sufficiently that A it means becomes uh, exist infinitely many and and the negation of this is that you know uh, but that one to, one to n is, is L, but for all for all small circuits, they are slightly rejected. So the negation of so when I say V has no easy witness, I just mean the negation of V has easy witness. It means that that exists infinitely many n uh, one to the so one to the n is in L and all small all small choose tape all choose table of small circuits are rejected. Okay, so actually if you look at this condition, it's it seems already seems clear that you can do something with it, right? Because so one to the n is in L means that B is going to be V is going to accept something. That's the first requirement for GW. And if this says that on those infinitely many n, I'll call them good n. On those good n, the something accepted by V one to the n has no small circuit. All of them. All of them. Any yes. yes, yes, because. Oh, yeah, because yeah, any witness is hard, and that exists some witness. Okay, so, so now I'll try to explain why this gives you an MTRG. But uh, if you are familiar with uh, like uh, this, this, this is already kind of obvious. You you can verify a hard choose table for infinitely many inputs n. So this, that, that's why it is infinitely open actually. But let, let me just quickly. Oh, bad. I actually want to keep this, but uh, I don't think this can move. Uh, okay, just maybe take uh, three seconds to memorize this. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, the one time when you didn't remind the speaker that this uh, backward board <laughs> cannot move. <laughs> Okay, so I will tell you this. So, uh, so okay, I need to define an NPRG, and but, but I actually, I already told you a definition. So, CW is just going to be defined as okay. So actually, that's a like family of NPRG. So the S one is going to be defined as you know I go on one to the n and uh, u and. Uh, What's GP then? GP is going to so it's going to be like you uh, take some P uh, G construction which takes U takes R. Okay, so I, 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 let, let me explain what, what I mean. So 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 let's just use that as a black box. Suppose I give you a choose table of some function which is hard and against two to the n to the epsilon size circuits. That's a way to turn it into a PRG with polylog density fully polynomial size circuits. 
And because by all no easy witness condition, whenever this accepts, it means U has no small size circuits. So we can apply the classical construction to get a PRG with polylogon citizens pulling polynomial size circuits. Oh, that's great. Okay, this is the, uh, and this is already explained before because we have polylogon citizens PRG. That's why it's quasi polynomial. Okay, so I guess now I have to get to the real part about how do you prove the how do you prove this? Okay. Okay, this is the where the excite the fun began, I guess. So okay, so first of all, I'm saying that this natural dimension gives you some verifier has no easy witness. And this verifier is for some unary language which is being not committed to the end time. So we have to pick a language and pick a verifier. I'm going to tell you how to pick them. So first of all, an intuitive choice to pick for the language is the hardest language, right? You want something hard, of course. So you can do it by not the mystic time hierarchy. So that exists a unary language L which is in non deterministic to the end time, but not in non deterministic to the end by end time. So this is going to be our unary language to look at. This is this makes sense because this is the hardest language in non deterministic to the end time in some sense. So now we have to specify a verifier. And then I'm going to show you that that verifier has, has no easy witness. I still mean this generalization. Okay, so what's the verifier? Oh, it's actually the PCP verifier. So we'll apply the PCP theorem. Okay, this, was, if you are not familiar with this, you have, I'm going to do it slowly because this might require some uh, pretext. So, okay, so what is that PCP verifier? The PCP verifier, I'll call it BPCP. It's uh, it only spent so so it, it is not limited to the end time. So the proof is to the end um, bits. The PCP verifier is only going to access the proof as an oracle. So it can you know it, it can say okay, give me the i bit of the proof to the oracle. The oracle returns the i bit of the proof. So the oracle can be think of as like you know. Uh, n-bit function, whose two stable in the proof. And also the verifier is going to be randomized. It takes n bits of randomness. Okay, if you are familiar with PCP, you, you'll tell me this is not a n plus or log. But uh, let's forget about it, just, uh, just n bits, just to keep things simple, okay? So, so this is a randomized verifier. It gets Oracle access to the proof of two to the n bits, and takes an n bit of randomness and it runs in for another time. Okay. Okay, let's see. So, wait, what's the condition? The condition says that first, if one is in L, then the probability of uh, accepted, of, uh, of uh, B PCP. Oh, sorry. That exists a proof, of course, of a proof which is a function such that. Uh, okay, so that should be another. That should be two input right? It's one. So it says that. If one to the n is in L, that exists some proof which is accessed as the oracle makes the PCP verifier always accept. You want to call O U or something you called it before? Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's I can call it I, I can call it a U, of course, but uh, I'm trying to say it's an oracle. It's, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, but as an oracle. Well, anyway, it's the same as the U before. 
Oh, uh, the true state law is you. Yeah, always that. Yeah, I was wondering if you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that, it's exactly you. Yes, exactly you. Yeah, just that now I'm thinking about as a function. Yeah, so you can identify a, a function with its true state law. That's the same, of course. So again, the same probability. Blah, 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 blah. Plus one is at the most one third. So this PDP theorem says that that's a very efficient verifier that takes you know random access to the uh, to the proof and the uh, only lossy polynomial time to verify a two to the n time computation. And then this is going to be <coughs> or uh, okay. So so the v here has to be deterministic, but this is why it's uh, randomized. So I have to slightly mix. Okay, so I'll define. V one to the U as whether the probability of V T C P accept the function corresponding to U. So yes, it's always just U. Okay, so okay, so what would I mean here? So the verifier will work with here. It's going to enumerate all randomness and check whether the you the witness will you makes it always accept. So the check whether the probability is one. So this is going to be all verifier. And I'm going to show you if this V has easy witness, then this leads to contradiction. So this V must not have easy witness. Uh, great. Okay, this I'll, I'll try to. Well, I'll, I'll do this. It's probably fine. Okay, so how do we prove this? So what can we try to contradict? We know that L is very hard. L is L is not in non-deterministic to, to the n by n time. So we try to give such an algorithm for L. That will be a, that will be a contradiction. And what we what we also know is that learning as a time two to the n to the epsilon with n piece of randomness is contained in non-deterministic. Two to the n minus n to the epsilon time. That's our assumption. This is faster than this. Okay. So, so if we can put the language L in in this class, we'll get a contradiction, right? Because this is this, this is our, our assumption. So our goal is to give a morning answer time. We give us this type of algorithm for L, assuming so under the assumption that uh, V, the V I just defined, the V I just defined here has easy witness. I guess you may already see how the algorithm works. Uh, it's actually very simple. Uh, but okay, I'll, I'll tell you how the algorithm works. I, I need to give you a morning answer algorithm which solves L in this time, assuming B has easy witness. Uh, okay, what, what do I do? The algorithm is very simple. What to do? You um, first you guess a two to the n to the epsilon size circuit C. That's how it did. Uh, unbit, unbit input. Then you draw. So this is the so this D is the Y in the definition. You are guessing something. Then you draw like a piece of randomness. Then you output simply. Uh, you output. And I'll write it. You output what you output when the, the PCP accept D with randomness. 
Let's, this is the algorithm. Okay, so first of all, let's verify the running time and the randomness. Okay, that's all the unrandom bits here. So this M makes sense. And the running time is very simple. You simulate the PCT verifier. Whenever it wants to query something, you evaluate the circuit D, right? And uh, the whole running time is going to be two to the n to the epsilon. Wait, is this clear? Thank you. So, okay, so why does this algorithm solve L under the assumption that V has easy witness? So V is defined as, as this. So V has easy witness means that whenever one to the n is in L, that some smart truth table satisfy this condition, which will be guessed here and then making the money asset algorithm accept. And of course, if you went to the end, so, so if you went to the end, in L, this APCP is going to guess something makes this always accept, and that this will be the proof to make APCP always accept. And then you will one to the end is not in L by the definition of a, of a PCP theorem. So whatever oracle you place here is going to be rejected with probability at least two thirds. So now you are, so, so, so all oracle will be rejected. So of course, including the, those, oracle, those small circuits. So a PCP will solve L in MA two to the M to the epsilon time with N bits of advice. And uh, under the assumption, we have no illusionness. But this is a contradiction. So this means this is false. So V has no easy witness, which is great because we have built all NPRG. Uh, maybe I should recall a bit like, because. Okay, so if V has no easy witness, now just goes, so this particular, now this particular V has no easy witness, now we have built up the NPRG. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, any question for now? Like, I think I just finished the general bootstrapping thing. Any, any question? I can, uh, you, you, you can steal it if you want, but uh, I'll, okay. Uh, I'll assume there's no question. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do I do? So, yeah, now I want to, uh, move to tell you how the how do I modify the whole proof to make it works for modern answer proof system with a C verifier. That's a, that's that, that's that's much harder. Why? Because so essentially what's so you you we you know, so actually you can try to do something like okay let's see in the algorithm I don't I got I don't guess general circuit, I guess like a restricted C circuit, like a A006 circuit. And uh, this kind of makes the verifier in, in money answer C time. And with, with some work, you can actually show that uh, the still that defined V has no small C witness, C witness. Which is, uh, but, uh, so with some work, you can prove this. And actually, Ryan Williams proved this in his like uh, 2013 paper, Natural Proof versus Generalization. But the problem is that if C is A006, this only allows you to verify a truth table is worst case hard against A006. But uh, you don't know how to, so, so for general circuits, it, it suffice to have a worst case hard truth table. But for SL6, we, we, we don't know how to do it. So uh, if you want to construct not, if you want to construct PRG against SL6, you have to verify a truth table which is average case hard against SL6. And we, we don't know how to do that, given this paradigm. So for now. we uh, showed you last week how to move from worst case to average case hardness using error correcting codes. 
right? But this is not implementable in ACC zero six. So it's yeah, like error correcting code require TC zero at least, or maybe yeah, TC zero. Yes. Okay, but uh, I will tell you how to do it regardless. But uh, that require a very interesting technical tool. Yeah, so essentially, so what is to average case reduction for A0 2 or A0 6 is a very interesting problem. So even like not average case 2, strong average case for A0 2, we don't know that. I mean, it, it, it'll be super good if you can do something like that, but uh, we don't. But, uh, okay, so, so because we'll need strong average case lower bound, we'll need some tools for, for proving strong average case lower bound. And uh, the tool we'll be using is uh, XOR lemma. But uh, not like, uh, but not like, a, it's not like any standard like XOR lemma will do. We'll need a very specific XOR lemma based on linear sums. Uh, I'll explain them in a moment. So linear sums. Just wonder how many people have the phrase Xolem or who didn't hear ever the phrase Xolem. Don't be shy. You don't need it. <laughs> who did or who didn't? Yeah, who didn't? Uh, I'm going to define it, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Then define I before I yeah, just mentioned that. Before these error correcting codes, well, uh, to make a worst case uh, hardness into a worst case hardness, uh, it requires two steps. But uh, I won't, yeah, Richard will tell you all about the problem. I need it's the uh, first time that, uh, you know, this type of problem was used, but uh, when uh, NDR in AC2 constructed the first, really the first PRG from one way functions or control functions. And the intuition for it then was simply the simple uh, you know, formation theoretic uh, intuition that if you have a coin and it has some bias, right, I can say uh, 0.99 maybe uh, uh, by source one, if you take the exclusive row of many, uh, many coin tosses, then the bias goes. And it becomes more and more unbiased. That's the yeah, intuition of which we have to make the situation of any small trigger. Oh, so, so um, yes, thanks so much for. I, I, I was trying to write something. So, yes, so I, I need to tell you what's a linear sum. So, let's think about C as a circular class, like AC06 or something. And uh, I mean, that, so the circuit will give you a Boolean function. And the linear sum of circuits is just, you know, a weighted sum of many C circuits. So, you know, okay, we'll make the coefficient between the minus one and y for simplicity. Oh, actually, this is important. We'll make them between minus one and one. And then L is simply computed as a linear sum of those stuff. And of course, now L is a real value function. It's not like a Boolean function anymore. And then we'll make a very important, very important promise or restriction that for every x, L of x should be in zero and one. So this is a, a, yeah, this is a, is a restriction. And then why I make this restriction is because I want, to, I want L to be somewhat similar than Boolean, to a Boolean function. So this should be interpreted as L on X is outputting one with probability of L of X. Like that. So it's like, think about it as like some accession probability or thing. Like so, yes. So this is a linear sum, uh, linear, the dimension of linear sums. So some of these is only these functions for which this condition holds. Uh, yes. This is very important. So this is a promise. So it's it's kind of like a semantic class of circuits. 
Uh, but sem semantic, I mean that it's not like you take every alpha, any type of alpha and say, I set some of this circuit. It has to satisfy this condition. Uh, yes. So this makes the second class model. Okay. I think I'm doing a lot of exercise today. <laughs> okay. C is a boolean. C is a boolean. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, C is boolean. Think about it as 806. Is that boolean? Yes. Do you want M to be like polynomial in the input size? Or? Oh, sorry. Something. So we have to, I haven't defined. The size of L. The size of the L is just the sum of the size of all its subcircuits. So this, of course, also found the M. So you want to say that to be have, have said at least one. So we'll talk about a polynomial size sum of C circuits, which means that all the uh, like M is polynomial and all the and all the subcircuits of uh, polynomial size. So it will be more concrete than polynomial size. So, so thanks so much for asking us. I haven't, I forgot to mention it. Okay, so what's the X or lemma I want to prove? So first of all, uh, let S to be a, okay, a Boolean function. And I'm going to define as um, to the parity k to be a function on n to the k bits such that it's going to you know partition the n to the k input bits into k block each of less n and it's defined as uh, taking a parity okay so so why do you expect this f to the parity k is going to be hard? So let's see if you if if, if this uh, given f suppose it's hard to compute f correctly on uh, at the most uh, suppose that zero zero point one fraction of f is hard to compute. Then this if you do it at k times and it's a parity. So if any of it hits the zero point one fraction of f. The whole thing is going to be hard. And then, so, so you take K to be very large, then the probability, the probability of a random input hits a hard region is, is going to be uh, exponentially, not to hit a hard region is going to be exponentially small. And I'm actually just explaining like a rather proof of the XOR lemma, but uh, that, that's the intuition. Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to prove. We, 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 we will prove that if, uh, if for all sum of C circuits H, okay, which is, it's very important to note that it's yeah, from zero and one with size, with size at most uh, time, and S epsilon square. Oh, this N is the input lens. S is the uh, uh, UUCS. Epsilon, UUCS, UUCS from two. If uh, for every such edge of this roughly larger than S size, we know that the expectation of X The expectation of all x is greater than zero point zero one. So this means that if like if every sum of C circuits edge uh, is like a zero point zero one uh, uh, far away from this Boolean function f, then we have a very good XOR lemma saying that f to the parity. Uh, uh, for some, I'll just write log epsilon minus one. Actually, it should be all so some constant. We could have our record 100 something like that, 1000 something like that. But not important. This is half plus epsilon hard 
a hard plus epsilon hard, I mean like for any against uh, S size circuit. Uh, oh, yeah, very important. Six circuit. So, so a half plus epsilon hard, I mean for every S size circuit C, it can only compute this function on at the most half plus epsilon fraction. So it's extremely hard to even approximate. And the F, you, you think about epsilon as something like, I don't know, uh, you think you can think about epsilon as something uh, like one over s or something? Yeah. So it's so it's going to be very okay. So this is the epsilon lemma. It says that a melt a, a very melt in approximability by linear sums can be translated to strong average case hardness using like uh, this transformation, epsilon transformation. But the spirit of usual uh, exolema. Hmm? In the spirit, it's, uh, it's uh, like the, the typical exolema. You are very particular about the complexity. Yes. Of, the, and, uh, 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 of hard against what? If you want hardness against C, uh, you want the mild hardness. If you want strong hardness against circuits of size C, you want the assumption, the mild hardness to be, to be against slightly bigger class, which always happens, uh, which is a sum C. Yes. In most cases, it's like majority C, but you want it to be sum. Uh, yes, and uh, that's a very, very good reason why we need sum C. And uh, essentially, because sum C keeps your algorithm working. But OK, that's a bit. Uh, OK, so uh, let me tell you a bit about, about uh, the source. So so actually, this so Levin didn't say yet in his proof, but uh, this kind of follow from Levin's first, uh, so it's, it's actually kind of follow from Levin's proof of Yas XOR lemma, which uh, I, I believe is the first published proof of the XOR lemma. And uh, so uh, I think many people notice that it gives you some linear sum reconstruction. And uh, for example, Shuichi Hirahara and uh, Ronan Shatter, they both told me this at some point, but it's kind of, I don't think it's explicitly written anywhere until like we like uh, we wrote it in like in our tiny tiny paper for this purpose. And uh, later, I and uh, Lu in our 2021 20, paper, we give a new proof of this lemma, which has the additional benefit that it, it can be de-randomized. I'm not going to tell you what it means by de-randomized, but. Uh, Okay, so the new proof is actually based on duality, which is very cool. I hope to explain the new proof, but I don't think I will be having enough time anyway. So let's. I have a preliminary question. Yes. Where do you take the mild hardness from? Because in the assumption, you only had the worst case hardness, not mild hardness. Good question. And that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Okay, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, sure. So, yeah, and this, this is all like average case. Yes. And uh, the condition that L is always between zero and one, it's not for most X, it's really for every X. Yes, right? yes. Now, I'm, I'm just wondering now, uh, clearly from this, this implies that if you don't assume LX is between zero, like for H, yes. you don't assume really between zero and one, but just after you truncate, Yes. To zero and one, then it's between zero and one. It would be a weaker statement. It would also imply the same thing. Do you really need like the yes. fact that you only yes. have to test? Yes. Okay. Yes. And then, okay. So why yes. is this? Want to be crucial? Um. Actually, it's not crucial, but uh, I want to pretend it's crucial because. Okay, let's see. You can get away with it with much more technical. So okay. So this is actually um, good because you can try to pretend that L is a Boolean function in a way that it outputs one with probability L of x. That's uh, important for what I'm going to say. But uh, actually, in a proof, you can make it. You, you can try to avoid this by doing something else. But then, then things will be a bit weird because you'll be like accepting with a minus probability. If you if I still try to interpret it as a, like accepting with some probability of x, and things still goes through. But uh, I want to say it's uh, between zero and one because I can pretend this is as accepting with some probability. Yeah. 
Okay, so this, this, is, this is actually an infinity. So if you minus half, this is, is saying that the L infinity norm is at most half. And actually, you can prove some different things when you assume the, L, the LP norm is at most half or something like that. And that will give you something different. And that's actually what, you, what happens in this paper. You, we, we play with various norm on this L and do something. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you this because that's much more technical than what I'm going to than what, what I need. Yeah, but I really like the connection. So yes, you can play with uh, different norm condition on L. And that's very important for the derandomized for derandomized XOR lemma to work. Uh, but I'm not I'm not telling that. Okay. okay I, need, I have 20 minutes. I think I think I will finish. Okay, good. Okay. So so, so with, with this extra I'm at hand at hand, we'll try to do something. Okay, so we'll try to get a verifier which kind of verifies a truth table, which is 0 0.01 far away from some of these things. And then we'll have like a strong every case harness. And uh, how do we do this? So okay, so what we're really gonna to prove is that MA time with sum of C verifier. If, it, if this is in, okay, I'll explain what that is even mean here because it's not Boolean. If this is in, has a non-trivial dimension, and what I'm going to prove is that this implies MAC is in, Infinity of the NQP. Okay, what do I mean here? This is that, so actually that's why we wanted to be the one because now we have this verifier is output a real output, but I'm just to, I'm just going to pretend it it, it output a boolean output by rounding its output to one with probability of its output. So if it, so this time work if it's minus one or like uh, something bigger because then the definition doesn't work. But uh, if it's zero and one, we can try to make a Boolean in a, like a simple, in a, in a simple way. So what I'm going to prove is that this, uh, okay, the whole thing, that's good. this shows that that's a busy, that exists, a verifier has no approximate Sum of C witness. So this will give the minus the half of this. Yes, because this is that uh, every very, everything we accept is going to be zero point zero one away from some of C some of C circuits, and it's going to accept something. Then we have then this will give us NPRG. For C, which can be used to derandomize uh, modeling RCC. And uh, I think, yeah, I will just tell you how, 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 this, how this works. And uh, how this is, okay, I need to still, I need to like, uh, formally define what this means. But, uh, okay, so. Uh, okay. Okay, so the verifier we will, we are, we will be using are actually the, the previous one. So we still apply PCP and we still check whether the witness is accepted with probability one. But now we want to prove that, uh, wait, I shouldn't erase this. Uh, okay, okay, I, 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 have to, I have to erase this. So let's recall the definition of uh, this is defined as whether B PCP uh, one to the N
right, the corresponding function of u one to the n are always accepted. And uh, I want to, I, I'm going to assume that, so when v has a, a 0 0.01 approximable sum of c witness, I mean that, I mean that when I say this, I mean that for all sufficiently large and if one to the n is in L, then that exists a function g which is uh, okay, which is always accepted by uh, by this PCP verifier, and uh, for some so M so size sum of C circuit. So the assumption you want to contradict. Yes, yes. So yes, this is assumption I want to contradict. Kind of so it's saying that V has the approximable. So it okay, V has witness which can be 0 0.01 approximated by sum of C circuits of size two to the n to the epsilon. And it says that for us the very large n, if one to the n is in L, it implies that exists a witness G. Which is accepted by this, this verifier, and G is close to some uh, sum of C circuits. That's the condition I want to contradict. And suppose this, this, this is a false, which means for infinitely many n, for all witness makes B accepts, it's no point one far away from sum of C circuits. We can use that to get strong average case hardness and build PRG. So I will actually do the same thing as before, but uh, I'm going to be very careful here. So Assuming this, I want to show you that L is in MA time sum of C verifier two to the n to the epsilon one times n piece of randomness. And uh, by our assumption, this is contained in non-deterministic two to the n minus n to the epsilon time. This is going to be a contradiction because L is assumed to be very hard. It's not in to the n by n time. So that's around this. And then this is from all, this is all assumption. So, so if we can show this, no, uh, this, if this V has easy witness approximable by some of C circuits, then we, we need to build this algorithm. And then we are arriving at a contradiction. So how do we? The, the thing you want to say that the PCP verifier could use not the actual G but something close to it. Uh, yes. And, uh, that's exactly what I'm trying to say, and uh, that's exactly the, what the algorithm does. The algorithm here, I'll write it as a PCP tilde. It's going to do some, it's going to be like at the first, I'll guess not a C circuit, but I'm going to guess a sum of C circuit of two to the n to the epsilon size, which is H from and then. The second step is as the same, you draw 
a random, random bits. Um, and but the third step here is that we are going to output still the same. We, we, we do the same thing. We output Okay, I guess people will be asking questions because what do I mean by I put this edge here? It's a, it's a non-Boolean output. So what, what, you to, what you are going to do is that you treat this as a Boolean oracle by do the probabilistic rounding. And uh, this will not give you a zero one. It will give you a probability of your acceptance when you do the probabilistic rounding on, on edge. So this is going to be a zero, zero, one value. In this probabilistic rounding, uh, if you query the same string twice, you're going to treat the answer, you're not going to resample? Uh, you have to resample. Oh, you have to resample. Yeah, you, you, you resample. You can make sure that PJP never ask the same bit twice. Okay. So, that, so, but yeah, you, you resemble, yes. You, you will ask twice, you, you resemble, yes. And then, hmm? When you guess the sum of C circuit, how do you check that it satisfies the property? Oh, fantastic. Uh, so that's something I want to hide. But uh, okay, since you are asking, yes, you, you cannot check. So, so actually you need to do more technical work to, to address this. And uh, so, yes, so because checking it always up to the other one is actually hard. But we can do some different check, which is doable in two to the n minus n to the epsilon time, which still makes the argument work. So that's something, some detail. The sex for asking, this is an important detail I am trying to hide here. But uh, yes, it is, it is hard to check. But suppose you can check that like in polynomial time, I don't know, then this is going to be a valid algorithm. And uh, okay, most importantly, We'll try to make this DPCP very efficient in the sense that if H is a linear sum of C circuit, then this whole thing in terms of R can be written as a sum of C circuits. So this will be a MA sum of C algorithm. I, I'm missing something. Couldn't you, be, instead of like checking that it satisfies uh, between zero and one, just define sum of C to be like, it can be anything, but then you truncate it to how do, between zero and how one. How do you increment the truncating? This, this incurs some additional operation on, the, on your circuit. Sure. And the, they, they, the truncating is actually kind of a majority. You, you have to avoid that. So, I mean, truncating is actually just a threshold, right? What I'm going to say. Sure. And, uh, and uh, we, you have to avoid, yes, you have to, you have to avoid stretch code in the reconstruction. If you use truncating, then yes, since that's all of course, still works. But, uh, but uh, then you have, you have to do something. I mean, this cannot be implemented in some of C anymore. It will be some like, I don't know, majority of C or stretch of C. Then you only do one, though, at the end. It's not like that. Yes, but, uh, that, but uh, one, even one majority is problematic. OK. I mean, that's, yeah, in the original XOR lemma, you, are, you also only have one majority, and, you can, and you, that cannot be used here. But you, you want to stress that here that the PCP verifier cannot really tell if H uh, is close to a... Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. So yeah, I, I, I want it's to... close to a hard function or is a hard function. I mean, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I want to tell you so okay so what we're assuming so we're assuming that for us the first thing that went to the end uh that exists a, so that is a correct so that is exists a sum of c circuits which is close to our correct proof i want to so if i want to say this algorithm works for l i want to say that for every for every sum of c circuits if it's close to a correct proof it's going to be accepted with probability at least two thirds that's called, so if you, if you make the PCP smooth, this, this is true. So this is a condition on the PCP saying that if, I have, if the, the PCP accepts a proof and I slightly corrupt the proof, I'm still going to accept with some decent probability, like two thirds. 
It's called smooth smoothness condition. Right? But it's, at least easy to believe because the PCP verifier is looking at the tiny function, function of the input yeah, yeah, yeah. of the oracle. So you know, it cannot distinguish really things that are yeah. very close to the yes. yeah, So smoothness just means that your, your input is to, your query distributed yeah. uniformly. So this actually works. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So so with like hiding all the technical details, this uh, assuming this is true, this is going to be an algorithm putting L in many other times sum of C verifier, blah, blah, blah. So, 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 and the epsilon times M bizarre verifier. And this is, by our assumption, this is contained in minus times to the N minus and to the epsilon minus time. This is a contradiction. So V has no approximable, um, V has no easy witness which are close to some of these circuits. This gives us the required NPRG. And the most important thing, this inclusion is unconditionally true for A006 using, even for some of six circuits, using Williams algorithm. So the whole thing works for A006 and we'll have a non-deterministic PRG for A006. And, uh, and uh, that's the uh, bootstrapping theorem for, for general circuit C. Yeah, question. Yeah, it's probably a real dumb question, but I don't know where he used the, what, where, where did you need the, the weights on sum was negative? Is it to get this, a, this H or the V and Oh, you mean? Or to get that to be in sum? Oh, so, oh, you mean the, the definition of sum of C circuits, I said alpha is in minus one and one? Yeah. And the, opposed to the old groups, which is just non negative. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, I feel like it, it's, probably, it's probably okay to, to assume alpha i is in zero and one, but I didn't check, so I just write minus one and one. And wouldn't that be the same as the majority, the original with the majority? Oh, it's not the same because you compute the sum. It's not the but I mean, you could, majority you cannot compute in ACC. So the, the, the thing is that, so if you have some sums, okay, so, okay, why sum is, why linear sum? You're asking why linear sum? Yeah. You're asking why linear sum is better than majority of C, something like that. So, okay, I'll tell you why. So, the reason is actually very simple. So, suppose I have a LX, which is, you know, um, so I have this, right? And I suppose I want to, you know, solve, uh, I want to calculate the expectation of the satisfy, I want to calculate uh, the expectation of whether L accepts a random X, which is just solving cat for L. This can be reduced to, you know, just use the linear, linearity of, uh, you are asking a very, very good question, yes. So approximate majority, is that what you're saying? Hmm? So, so you're saying you need to use something that's like, Oh. oh no! I'm saying that like, oh. linear sum is different. So I'm saying that if I have a you know an algorithm to approximate, so if I have a cat algorithm which can approximate this for for C circuits like AC zero, this can be turned into a cat algorithm for linear sum of C, right? By using just using the use and an alpha is hundred, so I mean the error will drop by first of m, but that's fine. Is that making sense? I'm not sure. But just if you want to compute the expectation of a sum, then it's a sum of expectation. If you want to compute the majority of a set, then it's not. Uh, yeah. This formula is not. So it's, a, it's an expected. Yeah, just because the linearity of expectation can be. No, I'm just trying to understand the difference in majority and oh, so I understand. suppose I want to solve the cat for you know I don't know majority of C. So how do you do? It? How do you reduce this to only solving cat for C circuits? You with, with, nobody knows what cat is, so it's oh, okay. cap cap is uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, so, okay, I just want to estimate the extension probability of. Uh, for this particular circuit over random inputs. Okay. And then this can be reduced to accept, estimating accept probability of which it's like a 
its uh, components, right? Yeah. By taking a linear sum. So this means that if I can estimate of those, I will have an estimate of this. The, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, suppose L is not linear sum, it's like a majority of many CI circuits. We, we, we don't know how to do this. And uh, this is why we can reduce, okay. we, can, we, can, we can have this because. Uh, I didn't know what the word cat meant, and that was what was confusing yeah. about what you said, but I'm good now. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I shouldn't say cat. I wasn't sure if I wasn't hearing you right, or I didn't know what the word meant. But it's okay. uh, I, I shouldn't say cat. I guess I'm just saying. Yeah, say it's called it's called say pp yeah sorry sorry so mm -hmm. yeah so so actually look, this is why is oh, -A -P -P, that's what you okay. okay, <laughs> okay so okay so this is exactly why linear sum is so interesting gotcha. linear sum of six circuits is both weak and strong it's weak in the sense that it keeps the algorithm working in a strong in the sense that you can amplify it using the xor lemma it's kind of a sweet spot that somehow magically make both things work. And uh, yeah, the proof is not hard, but uh, it turns out to figuring out this actually work is uh, the right. Okay, the, okay, the, the proof is not hard, but it's very long because there are many technical things going on. Like how do you check the output is between there and the one? You cannot check it. But what you do is that you minus half from this edge and I check the full, the full, the full norm is Less than one, uh, less than half, something like that. But the full norm is bounded, and uh, by having the full norm bound bounded, uh, this is not between the one, but somehow the proof still works. Uh, yes. So you can yeah, check. We don't know how to check the infinite norm. Infinite norm of h minus half is small, but, but we, we 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 could check the fourth norm of the full norm, the L four norm, and and the magically thing still works. But this is a complication, and. Uh, Yeah, and uh, I guess I'm finishing on time. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, Thanks. Yeah, I hope to actually tell you how the X one might is true. But uh, yeah, I, I guess we are going. I'm going a bit slower than. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so questions. But does this assumption of being between zero and one make the proof of the X Y lemma much harder? No, this is very. This is actually this. This is a very natural for the proof. It's very natural for the proof. Yes. Yeah, that's a very good, 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 good for proof of duality. It's like right? the, the, the only like non-analytic, everything else is like it would be some kind of L2 proof. This is what I mean. And then, but... What do you mean by L2 proof? Well, um, I'm not sure what I mean. <laughs> yeah, but geez, it's always L1. Oh, okay, I, okay. I, I, or L1, doesn't matter. But suddenly you have this condition that you only know something for those H's which have this L infinity thing. Oh, so, so actually, okay, I, 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 really, I really hope you can check this paper. So we have a paper in stock 2021, 20, which, which actually gets a trade-off between different norms. So you can assume like LP norms from an edge and you get something different from different norm assumption on edge. And uh, Okay, the paper actually work with L four over three norm for a very different, for a very, for a very, can I explain this? Probably, probably not here, but uh, this paper actually works with L four by three norm to prove one, one result for a very, like, uh, for some technical reason, yeah. But you asked if, if the XOR lemma proof becomes harder because you want to make H satisfy this problem. Yeah, you only know it for a small the XOR lemma, any XOR lemma essentially, well, almost all the go by, uh, you know, by contradiction. You assume that uh, when you take parities of many copies uh, and suppose it, uh, you get a bias with the C circuit, you want to say, well, then uh, I can get a very good estimate of a single instance, yeah. right, with uh, maybe a strong, stronger circuit. The circuit is sound, 
Yeah, and the proof, the, this proof, or the one particular proof, will give you uh, uh, a sum which oh, has... Actually, this proof is talent. This proof is by duality. It can't construct. Yeah, so proof by duality it does, but it does give you a distinguisher for. I'm, I'm not sure it gives you a reconstruction. The proof actually works directly with some dual project. But and there's a, doesn't it show the existence of, uh, I mean, it does show that, right? <laughs> Obviously, it proves the existence okay, yeah, of some of the, it's like duality. Proof is not constructive. Yeah, yeah, so it's yes, not yes. that you know construction, but it also exists. Yeah, yes, yes, small, yes. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I'm actually running. I'm using use exactly <laughs> one chart. So. <laughs> <laughs>